Okay, so now we have a nice uh, good ground uh, connection here. What we're going to do and we're going to take this ground system here. Let's cut some of this off. And slide this heat shrink down here. Okay, and from there, we grab our handy dandy heat gun. Make sure we don't have any other heat shrink tubing around there. give it a blow dry and so then you have a nice uh, little uh, shrunk tubing we're gonna take and we're gonna cut some pins off from this uh, holder here um, basically I mean you can kind of wiggle them back and forth and break them off but the best thing to do is use scissors to cut them right along the back edge here um, because wiggling and wire cutters don't work too well with this really thin metal. And there we have four little connectors and they are so tiny. So we, we don't really need these wings on the back of these things. Um, for a while I tried to kind of fold them over with tweezers or uh, needle nose pliers you know and crimp them on the way they're supposed to be crimped but it turned out to be a real pain in the butt uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them off uh, <clears throat> so when we try to put them in that connector housing uh, these these fins need to be down Otherwise, they won't go in all the way. They need to go in and click in in order for the connector to work. So those pins will get in the way if they're not either removed or bent over. So need to do something about that next. It's at the end, and I was able to use this to trim the fins off from this connector. I don't know if it will be possible to see it. Try to hold it up here and see if the camera will focus. But you can see the fins are trimmed off from that connector. So now that'll work. We can solder to it and, uh, and it will work. Um, now one more important thing about this. If I can use this solder as a pointer. So you can see the connector fin right at this end. The, the fins that we cut off over here and the tip of the connector is here and it has like a little brush contact on there it's extremely important not to get any solder into that brush contact because it actually flexes when you plug the connector in and that's how it makes contact with the other uh, contact inside the connector so you have to get the solder on the wire and on the back end but you can't put too much solder on or it'll wick into this uh, tab uh, that makes the contact and it'll solder it in place and then, it, and then it won't work, it won't push into the connector. So it's really tricky. Um, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to tin, uh, tin the end of this pin and by that I mean we need to get a little bit of solder on there so that when we tack on the wire... Okay, there. So we got it tinned. We're going to just stick this wire on there. And voila. We now have the wire soldered to the pin. And if we take a close look at the end of the pin, we don't have any solder wicked up into that. Uh, into the connector part 
I got a little bit of solder sticking up there. Um, hopefully that won't get in the way. The pins are soldered on. Uh, there's no bulkiness to the solder and there's no solder wicking up into the contact area of the pins. So now we know that we're going to wire this connector up and looking at this side this is this is a, a, a situation where I took the connector off um, so we have the connector that's mounted here and this is going to plug in this is going to plug in like this you can see the clip that goes in the top and the contact pins on the top in here and then on the bottom on here so I've drawn a drawing here so this is the way it works <clears throat> so we're going to plug these pins in like this and uh, first we need to make sure we assign them so when we come back around to wire up the other side we know what we're connecting to um, so we're going to make SCL orange SDA blue VCC brown and ground is green Okay, so that's how we're going to wire it up. So we're going to take first orange. It's going to be SCL. You can see the contact, uh, the contact, the flexible contact piece is sticking up. We're going to plug this into the back here and push it until it locks in. And you can see on this side that it's basically pushed all the way into the end and it's locked because the little knob is sticking out uh, in place. Do a little pull test and it doesn't come out. Do the rest here. There we go. Ground is locked in now. So now um, we have one more step to do and that's to kind of lock these wires in place make sure that they're not shorting to each other so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little knife in between each one of the wires make sure that they're not shorting out to each other um, and then we're going to put some epoxy on the back side of this connector and that will hold the wires in place so that they don't short out or they don't break off uh, as we're mating with the sensor. Okay, I used a knife and a magnifying glass to, to verify visually that they're not shorted together. Um, we also need to verify it electrically because until you do that you don't really know for sure. Um, so we're going to cut the other end of this cable off here. Okay, so now we're going to use this uh, ohmmeter continuity tester to make sure that we don't have any shorts in our cable uh, uh, before we epoxy the connector on. Um, so first of all, let's test to make sure we do have all the grounds. So those are the white striped wires. Yes, we have that one. That one. and that one. So all the white striped wires are connected to ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a clip lead on here and put this to one of the grounds. Make sure I have a connection. Yep. Then I'm going to test it to make sure we don't have any shorts to the signal wires. I'm not hearing any beeping, so that's good. Now we're going to test the connection. The most likely short on the green wire here would be to the brown one. 
and that's good. We don't have a short there. That would be a bad one because that's crossed ground in power. Um, it could do some damage. So now let's check to the orange wire, which would be shorted to the blue if there were a short. And we do not have a short there. And the other one we have to worry about is blue to brown. And so blue to brown, no short there. So electrically we are good to go, ready to epoxy the connector. So we're going to just take some regular um, epoxy, the two-part epoxy. Uh, make sure it's not conductive epoxy. Just any the regular kind of epoxy is not conductive. So whatever you get at your local hardware store. Um, and then we're just gonna we're just gonna dab that epoxy on the back side of this connector. Obviously you don't want to get any of it on the pins or any of it on this little uh, tab here. This this top little tab needs to be able to flex because when you plug the connector into its mating socket it'll fold up and then it'll catch and that's what holds it in place. To take it out you need to push down on this little tab at the end of this and then pull it out. So you want to make sure that you don't get any epoxy on that um, that flap there that is used to uh, lock it into the connector. Okay, so here we have the connector we worked on yesterday. You can see that I epoxied around the connector. Uh, it it, it uh, is epoxied around the wires and also attached to the connector. So now the wires are nice and uh, sturdily mated to the connector. Uh, just do another electrical check to make sure we didn't short anything out while we were epoxying and we should be good to go with the connector. Um, in addition you can see that I stayed far away from this top tab just to make sure that we didn't get any epoxy on that top tab. That way you can still pinch it as you need to to get the connector in and out of the mating connector. <laughs>